Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in crypto and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, just like the thumbnail and the title suggests, there's a lot of things going on as far as inflation and Bitcoin. And these are the things that we must do to kind of reverse these trends and get people or people investing in crypto on the right track. So we're going to take a look at uh, an article where it talks about Fed to the rescue, Jerome Powell and his infinite powers, with the things that we must do to kind of correct these things. We're going to take a look at the data as far as on-chain analysis. I'm also going to take a look at uh, Avalanche and Coinbase. And finally, a little world mobile and card wallet info. So we'll get into all that stuff. But first, take a look at what's going on the market. So today, it's just one of those days. It's uh, Wednesday. We're looking a little flat, I must be honest. And uh, market is a little down. $1.83 trillion. Everything's down across the board. There's a couple of winners here, but really this is the story. The story is that we're down. Uh, the Bitcoin price is 41,000. I'm pretty sure Ethereum is below three. Cardano is almost at two. And uh, after all that, all these problems, look at the Bitcoin daily sentiment. 66 out of 100 people are still bullish because they still believe quarter four is going to be great. And uh, I'm hoping for that. I think we can see some fireworks, but there's gotta be some things that have to change. And we're gonna get into that uh, right now. And what's going on? This is a story about Fed to the rescue. And just like if you've been following this, this whole story about the Jerome Powell coming out and talking about uh, inflation, and just how, how high it is, but he wasn't too worried about it. He comes out again and says, you know what? It's a little bit more than I ex expected. So here's what is going on. I'm just gonna give you the, the highlights of what has been said. So Jerome Powell is gonna give a speech on Thursday and it's been uh, put out and it reflects a similar message as he explains to the Senate Banking Committee in his pre-published statements that the rise in inflation may persist for a bit longer. He states, inflation is elevated and will likely remain so in coming months before moderating. Meaning this, this inflation, they didn't think it's gonna go this high, but it is. They thought two to 3%, no big deal. I've heard numbers as high as five to 6%. And I think it may even go higher. And we can see that in the grocery stores. We can see that in the products that we buy and everything else. Things are just going up. It's the same dollars that we have, but the purchasing power has decreased. And what I think really has to go on here is to happen is that if you're not in crypto and if you're not in the finance sector, you don't kind of get it. You're just like dollars of dollars. Who cares? And I think there's some things that we have to do to actually get people on the right track and maybe steer them into cryptocurrency. Now, I can't tell you what to do because I'm not a financial advisor. And this is not this is investment opinion, not investment advice. But to me, I think it comes down to this. People have to know about the purchasing power of the dollar. And if you can take a look at uh, this little diagram here, I always like to pull this up, is that you've got the purchasing power as it's uh, been degraded over the decades. And uh, the reason why it degrades is because there's so much, so many dollars being pumped in the market because of the printing press, right? And then underneath here on the right-hand side, it says, look, as of February 10th, 2021, there was 2.05 trillion worth of Federal Reserve notes in circulation. And that is way more than we had in the 90s and early 2000s. And of course, it's only gonna get worse as we see another bill for $3.5 trillion. Don't know if that's gonna get passed, but that's what it is. So people have to realize that the it's not the dollar that is the problem. It is the purchasing power of the dollar and is the amount of the actually printing that is the issue. And that I think is the big thing. And to, to help you out, if you got friends, family, and loved ones that just don't get it, that's okay. I didn't get it either. Just show them this. I'm gonna link this in the description where you can find you can find these pictures everywhere, but I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna tweet this out. So just follow me on Twitter and you can find it. Super simple. And it says, look, inflation. And 20, 20 bucks in 1928, you could buy the supermarket almost. Uh, and that's when, you know, the dollar really was, was first come out. 2011, Bitcoin, eh, guess what? You got one Bitcoin, couldn't buy you much, maybe some beans and rice. Uh, 1996, 20 bucks could buy you about half of what you had, or maybe even a third because of the uh, purchasing power. But guess what? In two years, it doubled or tripled what you could buy with Bitcoin. I think it was even more than that uh, from that amount of time. And then 2017, Again, the same 20 bucks would get you beans and rice. In 2017, uh, one Bitcoin would buy you essentially a very cheap car, <laughs> around 20 grand. And uh, that is how the dollars actually work. So if we can show these things to people, I think it would really help them to understand that, hey, the dollars that I have in my bank account are just eroding and degrading over time. I should probably get into assets. Again, financial uh, opinion not financial advice. And then also you can show them this. If they're just kind of confused, like, oh, I don't know, you know about Bitcoin or, or cryptocurrency, just show them this, okay? Again, I'll tweet this out. If you put a hundred bucks into Bitcoin, 
This was over the last decade. This is actually, this was a uh, initial value as of January 2nd, 2009. If you put a hundred bucks in the Bitcoin, 20, 2009, you'd have 9 million bucks. It's pretty good. However, in 2009, if you would have invested in the Alibaba, not too bad, but you would have got 200 bucks. You would have doubled your money. It's pretty good. How about Walmart? 200 something dollars. How about Johnson & Johnson, 316? Brookshire Hathaway, great company. You'd have, you'd have tripled your money, which is not too bad. Microsoft, 1,000. Visa, 1.7. Apple, 2.4. And Amazon, 3.3. Some of the big top earners in the S&P 500, that's all you would get with your 100 bucks as opposed to a Bitcoin. So I'm not saying you can make those same gains of Bitcoin, but it kind of shows you the best performing uh, asset has been Bitcoin over the last uh, decade, 12 years. So just show them that. I think that's something that we must do to really educate our peers. Anyhow, to continue on with this uh, story, there's just one more thing I want to make mention, which was Powell's pre-published remarks from the upcoming Senate Bank Committee testimony. Note that the central bank will always step in until the U.S. economy has recovered. So the printing press is good for Bitcoin because it will degrade the purchasing power of the dollar. The Fed stepping in and bailing everybody out essentially is also good for Bitcoin because guess what? Unfortunately, I hate to tell this to you, we're pretty correlated. We're pretty correlated with the stock market. We don't, we really don't like when the institutional players come in and they sell off their holdings, but guess what? Uh, we love when they buy. And here's the thing. This is a correlation matrix. And if you are positively correlated, it means you're going to do the same thing. Zero is no correlation. And negative, you're going to do the exact opposite. So for the US dollar index, like we talked about, it's about negative 0.84 or negative 0.89 for Ethereum. I mean, it does the exact opposite. Too much inflation, actually good for Bitcoin, deflationary. Great. NASDAQ, S&P 500, Dow Jones, DAX, so on and so forth, they are positively correlated. So if the stock market goes down and equities go down, guess what's going to happen with the our crypto market? I hate to tell you, it's going to go down. We'd like it to be opposite. We'd like it to be uncorrelated, but it just isn't. And that's pretty much just how it is. And um, that's the long and the short of it. So look, as far as uh, this, this is what I think we must do. I think we should educate everybody and especially get that information out there uh, so they can make the best decision for themselves and their family. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. We talk about, just real quick, some on-chain data. This is what I see. I'm gonna talk about this the last couple of days or so. As far as if we can take a look at the crypto market, we know that Bitcoin's pretty much the big, uh, the big uh, leader of what's going on. Unique addresses. Unique addresses follow price change or positively price correlation. We take a look at this one. This was in November, December 2nd, 2017. It was the all-time high as far as unique Bitcoin wallet addresses. You know what happened in two, three weeks? All-time high. We had another another pivot pivoting point here. This was in June 25th, 2019. Another big, big event. And then over here, it's kind of, ah, I gotta blow this up so you can actually see it, sorry. So if we're over here, this little, this little spike right here, we are at December 22nd, 2020. What happened two or three months later? Huge price spike. And again, we went down and here we are coming back up again. So that I think is positive. Also, if we take a look at the money being spent into Bitcoin nodes, this is the lightning nodes. Look at what we got here. Lightning nodes, which are not, you know, nothing to sneeze at. Just been going up and to the right for the longest time. And then as of today, we've got the most of all time. Thankfully, probably because of El Salvador, they need a lot of nodes for the lightning network and everything else is going on for their second layer solution. Also, if we take a look at this, who's in the money, who's out of the money? Well, guess what? Uh, at this price of 41,000, about three quarters of the people are still in money because they're probably like me. You're probably like me. You probably bought Bitcoin a while ago, just holding on to it. Uh, about 4%, 3% are uh, kind of like in the middle or at money. They're, just, they're not losing, not gaining. And about 20% are out. If you're out of money because of Bitcoin, you just got in the game, don't worry. Hang. This is what somebody told me in 2017. If you don't like the price, just hang around. It'll change. And uh, that is the best advice, one of the best advice I ever got. Also, if we take a look at miner flows, uh, we see that miners aren't really selling too much. Also, the exchange reserves. We can see that the reserves of uh, cryptocurrency or Bitcoin on exchanges is going down. And when that happens, when the reserves of, exchange, of cryptocurrency goes down, it means people are taking it off exchanges, putting it in a cold storage, and what happens if you have the same demand, but you don't have the same supply? 
usually price goes up and it's only a time. And sweet Mary and Joseph, even Mike Novogratz is saying that there's gonna be a Bitcoin rally or a crypto rally in 2021. And uh, he goes on to state this. Uh, in investing, you know, the great asset class as it gets closer to the year end, the asset class that's done the best usually has a great finish. I don't know if that's like a traditional market saying. I've never heard that in my life, but uh, maybe someone can correct me in the comments section. And uh, next to last, one of the things I like, I like to look at is liquidations and who's going long and who's going short. And if we can take a look at this, these are, as far as all the exchanges, uh, you got a lot of people, more people going long than short. The only ones that aren't are the ones on Bybit and 72% of them are going short. Good luck to you guys, and uh, we'll see what happens. So I see this as a positive correlation. And then lastly, I think everybody knows this, but if you don't, uh, what's great about Bitcoin is that it's pretty well dispersed. I mean, evenly enough. Uh, if you look over here in the bottom right where it says percent of coins, 3%, uh, only 3% have between 100,000 and a million. That's probably exchanges. And then 10,000 to 100,000, you got 10%, 1,000 to 10,000, 28, 100 to 1,000 is 20.93%, 10 to 100 is 22%, which is a pretty big amount. Uh, that's a lot of us. And then one to 10 is 9%. That's evenly distributed as opposed to like, if you take like a, this is Dogecoin rich list. Let me see if I can bring this up. Dogecoin rich list. You can see on the on the uh, right, bottom right, 10 billion, 1 billion to 10 billion, uh, you're looking at 27%, 20%, and 15%. So like the vast majority is in like 100 different wallets. Uh, good luck if those guys want to dump on you. So again, I think this is great for the market. Uh, mar Bitcoin goes up, everything goes up. I think alts will even go up, but only time will tell. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. A lot of information, but uh, we'll finish up. We'll finish up strong. A little avalanche and Coinbase news. And uh, just so you know, uh, avalanche is going to be listed on Coinbase Pro on Thursday. Usually what happens if, if uh, liquidity is good, uh, they will list Avalanche on Coinbase regular and the price will go up. Uh, I don't know how much is gonna go up, but uh, I like Avalanche. And personally, if you see this thing right below you, it says uh, stake your Avalanche with uh, D News. Up above me is this thing that's, that spins on my head, Dan Teaches Crypto. I made this website, it's 100% free, 100%. Why did I make it free? Because not everybody can afford Five bucks a month, ten bucks a month, twenty bucks a month, especially globally. I mean, I if if you're in parts of Africa or India or Indonesia, you can't afford that. So I just made it 100 percent free. Go there. I show you how to stake it. I show you a lot of things about cryptocurrency, things that I've learned the last four years, and you can find that over at danteacherscrypto.com. So yeah, Avalanche, congratulations! I think you're gonna see some price appreciation. And lastly, World Mobile and Card Wallet, and this was sent out by World Mobile. World Mobile is one of my uh, one of my favorite cryptocurrencies. Do well and do good. You got them both in that, that same area. This is me and Mickey, uh, the CEO of World Mobile, talking about how they're going to build the infrastructure in parts of Tanzania and different parts of Africa because they're going to bring the telecommunications to that part and it's all going to be run on the Cardano blockchain. Great, great project, I believe. And uh, Card Wallet is it's a cross-chain dApp and you can store Cardano native tokens. Ooh alongside Bitcoin and Ethereum, enabling DeFi and encouraging innovation. So you can check that out. I'll link their website. It's cross-chain, non-custodial. You can you own your private keys, non-custodial architecture, exchange hundreds of assets across various blockchains with fixed rates. That's pretty darn sweet. Uh, storing and buy, and then here's the people. Uh, Tiago was, uh, did Dash and Cardano, part of Alcumfy Human Protocol. And let's see, Victoria was uh, CEO of Cointelegraph. And then uh, Sergey Yakovlev did a bunch of stuff with crypto. So good. So that's a pretty good project, uh, I would say. <laughs> I can't say. I haven't, done a, I haven't even done a deep dive. At some point, I will. This looks interesting. I got to go from that. And before anybody asks me, uh, no, this was not a sponsored post, but I'm going to be talking to Card Wallet. Maybe I'll be doing a little bit deeper stuff with. Uh, as far as a deep dive, but no. If I have to, if I receive any type of monetary compensation, there's a little bar that'll come up, it'll say, this was a sponsored post, and it wasn't. So anyhow, that's it for today. Look, I know, I know it's a lot of information, I went pretty fast, but there's so many things going on, it's an exciting time. Uh, if you like that video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. 
And uh, also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And uh, that's it for today. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.